seeing no male bakers out there. I am Trisha Flaherty from A Touch of Magic and I am bringing a little magic to you today. Now, I must thank Jennifer Cox of the Clonmel Apple Fest for inviting me to do this fabulous video. We are going to do an apple sponge because the core of this recipe is the apple. It's very appealing. So without further ado, I'm going to do the most divine, delectable, delicious apple sponge. This is in celebration of the Apple Festival running on the 25th to the 27th of September. So make sure you look up clubmelapplefest.ie to get all the information. So without further ado, as you can see, I like to work with everything mise en place. This looks like a complicated recipe. It is not. It's only because I have weighed out every single solitary item to make this cake fast and furious. So we are starting with our eggs and sugar. So in goes three mock eggs, large eggs. And I am now putting in 200 grams of caster sugar. So in goes my 200 grams of caster sugar and I'm gonna turn up the speed. I'm gonna leave this beep, 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 as if I was making a sweet roll. While I'm waiting for that to beat, I'm getting the rest of my elements together. I will need 200 grams of each buttermilk and natural yogurt. So I'm getting my buttermilk and my natural yogurt ready. I've also half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I've also got a full teaspoon of almond extract. So in that goes. So whisk, whisk, whisk. Now I'm waiting for the eggs and the sugar to emulsify. So if you want to zero in and have a quick look. I'm giving it everything. over my fan walls. While I'm waiting, I have 375 grams of plain flour for this divine apple cake. So the beautiful apple sponge and in goes three teaspoons of baking powder. And give it a stir. Now I will turn down the mixer. Let me see the color change. from a pale yellow. We are now going to add in all our buttermilk. So in the buttermilk goes, along with our almond extract and our vanilla extract, it really doesn't matter what stage you add your flavorings. And next in goes my natural yogurt. And this is full fat. I have tried it with low fat, it makes the cake denser, the sponge. This is beautiful and light, so go for a full fat natural yogurt. Oh, yummy! Now, the batter is very wet. And again, we're adding our oil. And again, I'm turning up the speed. And just as if I was making an mayonnaise. So from a height, I'm like Ainsley Harriet, from a height, pouring in sunflower oil, 125 grams of sunflower oil. In all that goes. Here's you go, clean as you go. I stack all of my ingredients together, and as you can see, it makes for easy to wash up. So everything has been weighed up the night before because I'm amazing. And then they're all weighed up in these little containers and stack, 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 which makes it a dream for kids to bake. Now, we have got our flour and we've got our baking powder in our bowl. We're turning this down. And I'm going to gently add in our flour. As you can see, I'm not doing spoon by spoon. This is a fabulous cake, it's quick and easy. I'm not even stopping to get a spoon because I'm just throwing the flour in. Turn up the speed ever so slightly. Hello! And it goes, clean as a 
go. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, my cleaning done at one lovely clean station. Can you zoom in and have a quick look at the batter? The batter has now done this beautiful, shiny. And what I'll do is I'll scrape down the bowl. But this batter is so gorgeous and light. It's going into a nine inch spring form tin. Down again, I'm preheating my oven to 180 degrees. Oh, 180. So I have now got my mix ready to rock and roll. We're nearly there, lads. So slow down the mix again. Now, the smell of this is just divine. And at this stage, it's just one of those. Ah, 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 job. Lick it later. Move that on the machine again. Thank you, Kenwood. And here we have a divine light soft batter. All our flour and sugar and everything else mixed in. So, this is where the fun begins because. The sponge mix, oh, so I forget my spoon. Stay there. Zoom. Zoom. Oh, squeak. So I have got my apple sponge and I'm pouring half into my bowl. Now what I have prepared earlier is an apple puree. So I have used 350 grams of pureed apple, sorry, of chopped Bramley apple. I have added butter, I have added sugar, and I have left that simmer for about 10 minutes. When it came out and came um, was lovely and cold, I've also added two tablespoons of apple juice. Now, the reason I'm not giving out this recipe of the apple puree is that my mouth speaks faster than Wi-Fi. Always look at the recipe in relation to when I'm doing videos, because everything and anything can happen when I'm doing a video. So you have an apple puree made with 350 grams of Bramley apple. You have a butter and sugar. Can't quite remember the quantities yet, but it's in the recipe. And you literally leave that cook for about 10 minutes. When it's cold, just to loosen it up, I've added two tablespoons of apple juice. Now, what I'm doing next is I am plopping, plop, 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 the apple puree onto, not all of it, but onto my sponge because I want to reserve a little bit for the top as well. So I am just going to use my spoon and just inject it into my little sponge. So it is sitting nicely. Any bit that I've missed can swirl in. So you now have a swirl of your apple mix and your sponge. And we're going to sandwich that on top again. Yummy! The smell of almond and spices is just divine. Bring our little almond sponge and apple sponge, cover up the little dollops of our puree. And again, we are going to fill with the rest of the puree. Now, one of the things I love about apple sponge in general is just texture. I love having the apple puree and then having a little crunch of apple. So in order to get another little crunch of apple, just to add another dimension. Clean as you go, clean as you go. I have chopped one Bramley apple just into pieces. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to scatter on top of this apple sponge. So we're talking apple, apple, apple and apple. And hey, it's apple today. We are celebrating the Clonmel Apple Fest. So Jennifer Cox, thank you so much for inviting me to demo. This is one of these type of sponges that on a Sunday afternoon, if it's wet and miserable, or a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, any excuse you would throw this into the oven because it is absolutely divine. I'm going to gently push down with my fingers and I can even feel that the batter is so light and fluffy. So you have got your buttermilk reacting with the flour immediately. So it is blooming. So you've got your sponge. I have got one teaspoon of cinnamon and I've got two tablespoons of sugar and I've created my own cinnamon sugar. And again, all I'm doing on top is just giving it a dusting 
of sprinkled cinnamon sugar to give it that va va boom. So not only will you have your cinnamon sugar crunch on top, you'll have a bite of apple and then you dig down into that lovely soft belly of the apple sponge and you'll get another lovely surprise of pureed apple. So we have got this delicious apple sponge. We have it laced and laden with apple, 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 apple. And if you love apple, this is the cake for you. So this is going into an oven, 180 preheated for an hour. It will rise up and you will know when it's done when you spring sprung. It's a very light sponge. It is absolutely divine served with caramel sauce. Now the caramel sauce I have prepared earlier, you will have in your recipe. It is divine. It is the type of caramel you would just eat with a spoon or you can pour it onto ice cream. When you're making it, you are melting your butter first, then you are adding your brown sugar. You're letting that bubble for about two minutes. Control yourself if the bubbles are rising up the pot. Wait for the two minutes and then you're adding cream. You are continuing to cook for another two minutes and then you turn it off the heat. So there is no fluffing about this particular toffee sauce. It's very runny, but you leave it go cold and this is what you'll come up with. This divine, thick, soft, creamy, delicious caramel sauce. It is absolutely sensational with this cake. So this cake is going into the oven for an hour at 180. In it goes. The caramel sauce is in the recipe outlined below because it is idiot proof. You melt your butter, you add your sugar, bubble for two minutes and you add your cream. So there is not, it's not rocket science. So you've got this beautiful caramel sauce. As I said, it is divine on its own. It is divine over ice cream, but it is sensational over that warm apple and almond sponge. So thank you, Clonmel Apple Fest, for letting me showcase the beauty, the wonder of the wild and wonderful apple I was showcasing today in association with Clonmel Apple Fest. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.